Okay, we're back for another brew day today. We are going to be doing a rye PA. And um, I've always liked the taste of rye and beer, so I feel I've never done a rye PA, so we're going to try it out. I've got the grains crushed again. Got a half a pound of rice hulls here. Um, when you use wheat malt or when you use rye malt, they tend to produce stuck sparges. If you've ever had a stuck sparge, you know how much that sucks. So putting uh, rice hulls in here uh, helps to filter the grain bed and it helps, I'm going to mix this in real good, and it helps to um, eliminate stuck sparges. So, But here's my grist. It's about 15, about 16 pounds worth. It's supposed to be around 1069 starting gravity. And we'll give it a good mix in here. I'm going to do this a little better here in a second. Uh, just an update, barley wines, they're still going. So we're still waiting on the oak barrel filled with water. And that's going. We're heating up our strike water right now to 169 degrees. Then we will uh, start the mash. What else should I say? Um, this one's going to use quite a little bit of hops. I've got pounds here. I'm not using all this, obviously, but we're going to use a mixture of Cascade, Centennial, and Palisade, which I've got in leaf form here. There's a pound of Palisade and a pound of this, um, but I'm not obviously going to use a pound each. So uh, we'll be back in a minute when we get to the mash. Yeah, be big boy. I love you. <laughs> Okay, uh, we've heated up to our temp here, and 169 about, and alright, so now we're going to dump in, I've got 6 grams of uh, gypsum here, this is a water hardener, the water around here is very soft, so I'll pour that in, give it a good stir, if I can find the mash pedal, what the hell? Okay, so get that nice and mixed in. Okay, you've seen this before. So now I'm going to add two, about a tablespoon of this pH stabilizer. It's called 5 2. One. Okay, and that's just to stabilize the mash. I do that every time. You can hear that foaming up in there. And now we're going to go ahead and put our strike water into our mash tub. I always wear gloves here, it's very hot. We're shooting for a mash temp around 155 on this. I want to mash a little higher. I'm looking for a little more body in this. Some higher mash temp. Should give me a better body here, so. Okay. We will give it a good stir, make sure all of our gypsum and everything is nice and mixed in there and put the lid on. Conserve the heat there. Okay, and now we'll let this sit for a good uh, minute or two. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and do this. You know, the cooler has been sitting for about two minutes, just heating up. You can see the steam coming out. We're going to stir in our grains. So once again, you've seen this before, you just keep them stirred to a nice kind of oatmeal like consistency. So that's that. We'll put the lid back on. We'll let this sit for an hour. Okay, I actually had this recipe called out for mash temperature of 154. I said 155 before. It was 154. And we are at 152, so we are off 2 degrees. Um, I should have known better. One thing uh, that happens, in the, with, at least with Beersmith, it, it can predict uh, how much water to use to give a certain temperature. But once you start getting into higher... Um, 
like for instance if you have 10 pounds of grain like a small beer like the last couple ones i've brewed it's usually spot on but once you get start getting into 14 15 16 pounds of grain you need to add i found through experience you need to add like two or three degrees to whatever beer smith tells you um for whatever reason it's off by two or three degrees so if i would have um, added the two or three degrees i would have been right at 154 so um i knew that i don't know why i didn't do it i'm kind of rushing through this um seven o'clock on a on a uh what is the wednesday so I'm trying to get done before midnight but um yeah just for future reference if you get if you have like a 15 pound grain bill or something like that and this is with beersmith only i can't comment on the other ones because i've never used them uh, if you're using beer smith uh, add like two or three degrees to whatever it says of course you can't brew a beer without pouring yourself a home brew so that's my next step all right so i've got uh, let's see what i have on tap i have a hefeweizen i have a pale ale i have another hefeweizen these two are brewed the same i think i've filmed that this one right here is used uh, y yeast weinhein stefanen this one used White Labs, Hefeweizen 4. I don't have anything on this tap, and on here I have a root beer. So, I am going to go, actually the Hefeweizen, I like the White Labs better than the Y East on this. So. Got a cup sitting under there because I don't feel like cleaning this grate a million times. So here you go, Rock Creek Brewing Hefeweizen. It's delicious. By the way, this is a call out to take some advice. You guys probably know him, he fell off the face of the earth in terms of YouTube. This guy used to start a lot of shit and all that kind of stuff and had haters and you know, I, for a while there, I thought it was pretty annoying, but I don't know man, I kinda, I kinda miss his vids. I, I hate to say it, I mean, He's, you know, he was bad there for a while, but he's never been nearly as bad as, like, someone like Steel Worldwide or somebody. But, anyways, this is a call out to you. Take some advice if you're watching. I know you probably aren't, but I want to brew your 1070 beer that you talk so much about. And you have the video up on your homepage right now, the 1070 beer. You're very proud of it. You don't want anyone to have the recipe. I will not tell anyone the recipe. I'll keep it secret, I promise. I just want to brew it and um, see. I want to try it myself. I want to see what the hype's about, see if it's as good as you you and the guy under the bridge think it is. And um, no, no, um, you know, I'm not trying to be like an asshole or anything. I'm being for real. I want to try it. I'm interested in it. And I'm not going to tell anyone it. It's just I'm interested in trying it. It looked good. So let me know um, if you're out there, if you're watching this. Let me know if you can send it to me, I'll try it out. Okay, so I ran into another question I have. For any of you familiar with Beer Smith, um, right here where it says estimated pre-boil gravity is 1069. Okay, in Beer Smith, it says my estimated original gravity is gonna be 1069. Like, once we're done boiling and everything, it should be 1069. This says the pre-boil gravity is supposed to be 1069. So I went to Beersmith and I looked in there, and for whatever reason, it assumes a mash efficiency of 70 or no 85 percent, and that's where it gets this number. Even though you put in your own efficiency in the front page, so I, I set it to 75 because I typically get between 70 and 75 percent. So I set the 75 percent, and it told me my OG should be 1069. Okay, well, it doesn't want to listen to me, and it still wants to assume that I'm going to get 85%. So it thinks that n n my OG is not going to be 1069, my pre boil gravity is going to be 1069, which means my OG will be like 1075 or 6, which would be 85% efficiency. It, basically, when I print it out, it shows this, and I was wondering if anyone knows how to fix that or if they've ever, if there's a reason it does that, just let me know. Okay, we're in the sparge, draining off. We're doing fly sparging using our ghetto method of the pasta strainer. You've seen this before, nothing new here.
Okay, so it's been about an hour. That's a good time for sparging. About one hour is a good amount of time. Got six and a half gallons of wort. I'm about to take a gravity reading and see what our pre-boil is, but we're heating it, going ahead and heating it up. It's 9.15, so we'll see how long it takes. I know a few of you had questions about how long it takes to bring this to boiling. We'll see how long it takes. So just a friendly suggestion, if you have one of these uh, timers, it's really nice, or these thermometers, because you can set the temperature, the set temperature to whatever you want, and it'll beep at you when it gets there. So I usually set it a couple degrees below boiling, so 207 is what I have it set to. So it beeps at me, so if I'm on the other side of the room doing something, um, I can run over here before it boils over. And it makes it really nice this, this time, because it takes so long, this is a good time to do all the other stuff. So I've already, as you can see, I've already taken my mash tun out of here. I've cleaned it out. I take, took back one of the brew pots. Right now, I'm, I've got the star sand filling up in the uh, fermenter. And um, I've got all my equipment out that I need for later, like the work chiller and all my hops and everything. So you can multitask. You can save time. I've cleaned up the mash tun. That saves time later on. So it's nice to have one of these because it'll beep at me. They also make... Um, wireless ones which are even cooler which is the same thing but you can take the receiver with you and you can like go outside and stuff and it'll beep at you from there so so i don't know 30 bucks 20 bucks for one of these things so it's well worth it just a just a tip just a um comment i want to make to some of you uh extract brewers that think all grain is uh you know has all this extra cleanup and all that kind of stuff um, when you're doing five gallon batches on the stove like I'm doing with the kind of equipment I'm doing, just a pot, you don't have a fancy keggle, you know, you're just using a work chiller, you don't have a pump and a terminator, all that stuff. When you're doing it like, like this right here, which I have all that stuff, you've seen videos, and the only reason I'm doing, uh, kind of stepping back, going old school here is because uh, I've brewed, f this is the third time in a week. It's a lot of brewing, and the reason is, is because I'm going out of town. In October and I'm trying to catch up with some brews so I had to brew several times this week normally I don't brew this much but um anyways so since I was brewing so much I didn't feel like getting out the pump and all that kind of stuff and doing all that um, I mean like I said I haven't wasted any time while I'm waiting for this to heat up I've already cleaned out my mash tun I've done everything and I'll, all I'm gonna do once this is done I'm gonna run the you know use the work chiller cool down the wort and um, like you normally would and then I'm just going to what I normally do is I you know empty my beer into the fermenter put it away put the yeast in it put it away and then I just um, put oxycotton uh, oxy <laughs> wow um, I put oxyclean sorry in um, the kettle here and just let it sit overnight with warm water and oxyclean so I don't have to scrub the pot or anything tonight. And then when I get back from work tomorrow afternoon, after it's been sitting for close to 24 hours, I dump out the OxyClean and uh, rinse it with warm water and the hot particles and everything just fall off. So it takes like five minutes to clean the kettle, if that. So really, it's, there's nothing in that. You know, I don't have to clean the work chiller. Um, I don't have to clean. The, the mash tun's already clean. There's no pump. There's no thermometer clean. So really, there's no... Just like an extract brewing, once you're done with the boil, you're done. I mean, you are here too. So really all you're adding is the, the mash. One hour for the mash, one hour for sparging. So it's two hour additional, um, maybe a little bit more for to wait on heating water. So it's not any more work though. That's what I'm trying to get across. It's more time, not more work, if you're doing it this way. Now, let me step back and say, once you have a pump, a terminator and all that stuff, it's more work. That's a lot more to clean. You have to flush the pump with PBW. You have to flush the terminator once you're done using it uh, with PBW and sanitizer and all this. It's a lot more work. However, that work, that extra work, um, comes in use when you're brewing 10 gallons or more on scale. So since I'm brewing only five gallons of these, that's why I'm indoors because it's not worth dragging the pump and all that stuff out for five gallons. Once you start doing 10 gallons, you can't, you know, you can't lift the pot anymore. It's too heavy to pour, so you need a pump, so the pump becomes useful. Uh, it would take hours and hours to use a freaking work chiller to cool down 10 gallons, so the Therminator comes in handy. And so, so really, 
for 10 gallon batches that's when the kegel and the pump and the therminator and all that comes in handy if you're doing five gallon matches and you do what i'm doing right here on the stove it's not that much work a little bit more time not much more work and who cares what is time just grab another beer it's not a big deal so if you got the time do it do it like this you don't have to advance to the pump and the thermometer. that's only when you want to start doing 10 gallon batches anyways i've been rambling on i'm sorry i just i've seen people comment on this before and i just wanted to clear it up since i've you know i've extract brewed for several several years in my life and then i moved into all grain like this and then i've gone beyond this now and now i have a kegel and the pumps and the therminators and the you know oxygenation kits and all that stuff so i've seen all the stages and i know you know what it really entails so all right anyways we'll get back to this okay guys uh we're starting to boil here as you can see it's starting just now haven't hit a strong rolling boil yet but here you can see it going and for those of you who want to know how long it took it's 10 o'clock now and we started this at 9 15 so it took 45 minutes to get six and a half gallons of wort, which was already at like 140 when we put it on here because of the mash, uh, from 140 to 212 on a gas stove. Oh, I will note though, however, I do have it going on two burners at once, front and the back, the pot's big enough. But anyways, I need to watch this because it's probably gonna boil over here. So yep, you can see a good boil starting. Gonna add our first edition of Centennial Hops. Turn the heat down for this. Gotta watch it. Never know when it's gonna go. Okay. 30 minute hop edition is a delicate blend of Centennial, Cascade, and Palisade hops. As you can see, a little bit of mix of pellet and whole leaf. Mmm, smells very good. Mmm, like earthy, spicy, floral, and citrusy all in one. Fifteen minute edition, another beautiful blend of the three hops. We're gonna add that. Okay, added one teaspoon of Irish moss with 10 minutes left, and now I'm going to add the wort chiller into the boil. This is to sterilize the wort chiller so we don't have any sanitary problems. 15 minutes to go. Washed yeast, beer is cooling. It's almost down to it's about 90 degrees right now. And we'll get ready to pitch into our fermenter. Okay, guys, I didn't uh, record me pitching the yeast. Uh, you've all seen that, so I just pitched the yeast and shook it up and took a gravity reading, and looks like it's 1.068. So right at 75, right around 70. Well, hold on, one point. Yeah, like 72% efficiency, which isn't bad. So 1.068 is the original gravity. 